My name's John Hunter and I'm a pretty much a researcher in landscape ecology and I've been up here in the Northern Tablelands oh, forever, since about 1986. These upland wetlands are really precious because there's so few of them and they form in a really unusual way, in a way that doesn't happen anymore. They're really dynamic, they're unlike so many communities in the world. They're, they're ephemeral, they're dynamic, they change constantly, they change through seasons, they change through wetting and drying regimes, they can be completely dry, completely wet, they can be wet for years on end or they can be dry for years on end. And every single one of these lagoons is an individual. How do they work? How do we manage them? And how do we keep them conserved? They have such a variety of systems within them. It's, it's so complex that it's going to take decades for us to, to understand them, and that's what makes them exciting. Fauna has to be very resilient in being able to pick a moment when everything's just right for itself. And so a lot of the species have developed interesting adaptations, both the plants and the animals, in dealing with these unpredictable, predictable changes. The lagoons themselves are listed both on the Federal Act and on the State Acts as endangered. And so wherever they occur, if they've got enough of the right features and they're not degraded too much, whether it's on private property or on public lands, they are actually considered high conservation value. So there's a number of threatened communities that occur. The lagoon themselves are considered an endangered system, but within them are a number of endangered communities as well. So there's Carrick Sedgelands, which are listed as an endangered community, which occur along the fringes of these lagoons. And also there's grasslands around the edge of the systems. And these grasslands, while not listed at the moment, probably should be because up here on the Northern Tablelands, they're dominated by grasses that don't dominate any other grassland anywhere else in Australia. But then we get down to the species themselves. And some of these lagoons have very interesting species that don't occur in any other place. There's a whole lot of fauna that need these systems and the dynamic of wetting and drying. Fire is a really interesting situation with any community and it's always complex. The problem with fire is that people like to have a dichotomous view about it. It's either really good or it's really bad and there's no in-betweens and fire is complex. Within these upland wetlands, these lagoons, fire is not a natural component of them. One of the things about them is that even during this really devastating drought period, all of them that we know of completely dried out. But there's elements within that lagoon that even if it could burn, shouldn't be burnt. And the reason is, is that these have a peaty layer. Some of this peat is really deep, metres and metres deep. And that peaty layer is incredibly important during these really, really dry periods. The reason is, is that it's like a sponge that keeps the area moist, protects the seeds that are in those peaty layers and protects some of the animals, frogs and all sorts of insects that will survive in this damp peaty layer. In fact, we were surveying some of these lagoons and taking soil samples during the height of this last drought. And some of those lagoons were still damp, were still wet. And this isn't from groundwater. This is because that peat kept the moisture in. Having vegetation on the surface of this also stops that peat from drying out and cracking. So if we maintain the vegetation on top where the vegetation occurs and we maintain the peat layer, then the system can cope with an extended dry period. But if we let fire get in there, fire can open up the vegetation, dry out the peat so it cracks and dries out further, and then it gets harder and harder for the system to recover. On top of that, if a fire gets into the peat, the peat can burn away. Now this is an important component of the lagoon that takes thousands of years to develop, particularly if it's very deep. And once you burn that peat away, you may never get it back, particularly not in any of our lifetimes. The importance of these, this vegetation that surrounds the lagoon 
is incredible because it's a buffer. And this dense vegetation actually takes out a lot of the really bad stuff that comes with that overland water flow. And it's not really a fire threat. Most of these lagoons are incredibly small systems with, with tiny areas around them. And they don't really represent a major fire hazard. Fire actually severely disrupts these systems on so many levels. They're not supposed to be burnt. So managing a, a reserve is sort of from highest priority down. It's, it's really fire, pest, weeds, and then um, humans, as in um, visitors, uh, neighbours, and they're all very important. So every reserve in New South Wales has a fire management strategy. And these strategies are uh, developed first within parks and then uh, together with the, the BFMC, the Bush Fire Management Committee, which has uh, representatives from the RFS, the Rural Fire Service, National Parks, Forestry, Council, and, and, and members of the public. We try and work out uh, what's the best strategy for the, for the park. But the lagoon itself is, is there's no ecological reason to, to burn it. To, to us and to the people with, with the experience and the knowledge within the RFS and, and national parks, it, it's obvious, but some, some of our neighbours might not have that same experience. And, and during the drought, there were worries about perceived fuel potentials within, within the park. And of course, during the dry time, if we did have a lightning strike in here, it, probably would have taken because of the, the dry conditions. I would have moved through the park with the wind direction and stopped at the fence, most likely. This, this park is virtually, all of it uh, can be considered a, a threatened ecological community, um, which makes this, this even, yeah, probably one of the most important national parks or, or park estates, nature reserves within the, within the region.